Hi everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm bringing you another review for another game, for another system, on another day. And today it's Oxen Free out on Steam for the PC. Here's where I usually give a bit of the story out, but I actually think the best thing to do is just say this, in the immortal words of that old creepy grandpa in the Pet Cemetery movie, sometimes dead is better. And that's a theme you should remember throughout this review. Really, take one part Session 9, one part Exorcist, one part Monkey Island, and somehow end up mixing some Stand By Me in there, and you have Oxen Free, which won't be the last time I end up rhyming during this review. So let's go ahead and see how this adventure game in the sort of 2.5D vein does, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Oxen Free, the worst game of truth or dare ever created, another game based on the Pacific Northwest proving to us that it really is Creepsville, and playing a detective by channeling 1980s beatbox rappers carrying stereo on their shoulders. As always, graphics are up first. Now, this is a game that's both give and take, and it's also easily lodged into typical graphical stylings that you would expect for this genre, but it sort of seems to smash into the confines of that description rather often. Speaking of smashing into things, while 2D like old style point and click adventures, say like Secret of Monkey Island and so forth, the light bit of depth provided by both movement and graphical representations gives the world a layered look and also makes you feel like friggin' Stevie Wonder looking for a new piano. You can spend an inordinate amount of time moving through the somewhat Dr. Seuss-like level design and not going where you want to go due to the truncated view and also the bent and twisted pathing that adds environmental detail but makes it a little bit difficult to sometimes move around. Add in the absolutely tremendous use of both detailed and subtle oil painted looking backgrounds though and you have a game that really is instantly recognizable and then the longer you look at it the more it looks odd and unique. And of course notice I didn't say bad right there. It's lower detail but it's highly lit and it has color soaked environments which are outstanding in their grabbiness on the eye. It's almost impossible to not see some little thing within the game world that's interesting in every location. Now as I said it's not perfect. There is some issues with the pathing and at times both animations and locations can look a little bit odd. And interactions between characters, and especially the background, is far more of a suggestion than an actual occurrence, and I did have some issues there, which I'll speak about in a second. That being said, Oxenfree looks pretty damn interesting, if not at times, very visually impressive. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that brings us to the trifecta that's gonna get you sound, music, and voice. Unsafe radiation limits. You know, I'd normally find this stuff kinda interesting, really. You know. Normally. You don't have to make me feel better about getting you trapped on Horror Island. Horror Island? Sounds a little different than what we're on. Why would you think I said Horror Island? You can prove that you lied, the accuser gets to slap you. It's a good, uh, getting to know somebody game. Yeah, fun. An excuse to hit run. Hey, I'm the truthiest truth, whoever All truthed, right, let's uh... just get on with it. Okay, so, first, we're gonna... I'll start. Ren. Uh-huh. Come on, fess up. You want to go out with Nona, right? Now, sound is up first. Sound effects really run lean with very few environmental effects like rain or a crackling fire. While direct sounds like interactions with objects and such occur at regular intervals, it's fairly humdrum stuff though overall. I'd say it's okay, though the occasional otherworldly area or random effect used to punctuate some potent moment was done pretty well, but that's about all I'll say. Music. Now, though at times it's a mixed bag and frankly thematically all over the place with almost dancing ambient trance themes during some scenes replaced by oddly paced tracks in other locations, it was all good, but it wasn't great. A couple tracks were phenomenal, like one where the instruments shared many of the tonal aspects of the environmental sounds, so you have this mixture of a wet dripping atmosphere and the music that had the same longer tones within its sampled instruments, and that was really cool. Where the game really hits its highs is when it tries to channel a little bit of John Carpenter with those throbbing synths. Multiple places that had that kind of music really seemed to sing, while others were a little bit discordant, like one particular track in a cave that just really almost didn't even sound like music, and I think they were going for something there that maybe just didn't hit it with me. If you take the, all the tracks as a package, I would say it's average. It's got some stunners there, but it's also got a couple duds. 
And of course, that brings us to voice. And it's like five versions of me running around. These are the most talkative, jabby bastards you're ever going to see in a game. And it's wonderful. Finally, a game understands that it doesn't need to deliver dialogue like the participants will die if two words are said over the top of one another and they're worried some kind of magic spell is going to be cast. Instead, you're all talking, some interrupting, some pausing for others. It's wonderful. And at times, it's exactly what it sounds like, which is messy. But it absolutely felt real and far more enjoyable than the tennis game that you see most games feel narrative should be like. Now, that doesn't mean everything's perfect. Sadly, the recordings and lines were hit and miss, with some recordings sounding relatively low budget with odd issues like they recorded them in somebody's cardboard box. And no one's going to say this is great or excellent writing. It suffers the same odd jumble of ideas that most teen writing suffers from. And though at times it seems authentic, at other times it's a bit too my so-called life, the poltergeist years. Other than that, I would say it's pretty good. It's an immense amount, and it is an almost Herculean effort when you look at it. And of course, that brings us to the big dog, which is gameplay. You play as Alex, a young woman, joining some friends on the island for a little get-together. Maybe a couple beers and who knows what else. Once you arrive, well, it takes about 11 seconds for the history of this group to rear its ugly damn head. And pretty soon, you realize that if you have two boys and three girls on a trip instead of two couples and hot amateur filmmaking, usually one of them is going to be a stone cold bitch. But luckily, it doesn't take long before you're engaged in a mystery of time loops, dimensional oh shit moments, and occasional suicides and ghosts. Now, during your adventures, you have some unique gameplay elements, like a radio that you put up on your shoulder or you just carry inside of some magical pocket on your character. It's far more like a multi-tool and has a great mechanic involving listening to ghostly radio signals and having to puzzle through what they mean, as well as channeling in strange effects within the game world. At some point while adventuring, though, you're going to get caught in a time loop, and the continued experience and it's seeping into the memory of those experiencing it more often than not is profound. Absolutely spellbinding storytelling in these moments, and things you do later do matter. And it's just so cool. They can matter right away or they can matter later in the time loop. Are you listening, Don't Nod? Let's make sure that happens in the next season of Life is Strange, at least at the end, shall we? Now, while the story is interesting and highly captivating, the gameplay is in the end fairly bog standard aside from those little change-ups and basically moving left to right or right to left in areas, trying to solve puzzles, discuss the situation, and find the item whack-a-mole with whatever quest that you're currently tasked to finish. Luckily, there are only a couple moments of true retreading of locations enough to bother you, but it it does actually occur, so be prepared. Lastly, I really do have to say what works so well in Oxenfree is its uniquely light way of handling societal, emotional, and overall relationship issues within a group dynamic and wrapping that into a ghost story without saying, hey, look at us. It's not as in your face as some titles we've seen recently, and that sneaking up on you game style and game design lends a bit of dexterity to the details that other titles are missing. And of course, that brings us to fun factor. First, my hat's off to these guys. The story held together through two playthroughs without much confusion, even though in my first I failed a couple puzzles or missed a couple aspects of the finer details that were present. Now, while it may not have the staying heartfelt resonance of Life is Strange, the interactions, both short-lived and longer-lasting, and of course, repeated moments, are outstanding here. Add into that the impact you feel as you play, knowing and reacting to past decisions you may have made, and the game certainly keeps you invested. You know, Fun Factor isn't always about laughing, and I wasn't cackling like a madman, but the inclusion of the unique gameplay elements and the puzzle factors made the title very enjoyable to play through even a second time. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch rating scale. Now here's the weird thing. This is going to be a buy, for sure, but just barely, and not because of its quality, but because of its frankly fairly stunning price tag at $19.99. Now some people may question that, but for a game that can be played at an easy pace and beaten in four hours or less, that's not actually the best price, especially now that we see a lot of titles that have three, four, five times that amount of gameplay and are actually at the $14 or $12.99 price tag, which I think would fit this title much more. Now that being said, it is replayable, obviously, and it should be, but that doesn't mean it will be. And that's just like pretty much any game, even though in the end, this title sort of begs for it, it's not really required. And I really have to say that price is stunningly high for what I felt I got. It's still a good game though. It's still worth a buy, but I can tell you at $19.99, uh, I put it in and out of my cart quite a few times before I ended up hitting that buy button. So as always, if you like the video, hit like. If you dislike it, hit dislike. If you want to, you can come to our Reddit, discuss the game video in the forum there that we have, or maybe just post on YouTube itself. As always, okay. peace out. Shut the hell up. I don't want to hear any more of your ghost garbage, all right? It isn't garbage, and we're not ghosts. Don't be rude. Alex, we know you're in charge, and we know your plan, and we also know that your plan won't work. It never does. 
So we have a proposition for you. A deal. A bargain, really. 